So today we're going to take our graphing skills and extend them into other trigonometric functions. Today we're going to look at things like the tangent, the cosecant, the secant, and the cotangent. And we're actually going to graph all of these by making use of our knowledge of the sine and cosine functions. It turns out that because of the relationships between these various trig functions, we can come up with the graphs of these functions just by thinking carefully about our sine and cosine graphs. So let's go ahead and start by making some nice graphs of sine and cosine and look for relationships and ways to make use of this knowledge that we already have. So I'm going to make a rather large graph here so we can see some fine details. And we're going to begin today with the graph of tangent. And we're going to first of all understand a relationship that sine and cosine share with tangent and then see how that relationship helps us to come up with the graph. So in red here, I have the graph of the sine function. Again, a period of 2 pi and starts at the origin and is an increasing function at the origin. And we're going to look at tangent this morning. And those are pretty nice graphs this morning, if I say so myself. Yes, it is morning. I'm doing this one on Wednesday morning, in case you're, in case you're wondering when, when these are taking place. Usually I'm doing them during my prep or after school. So today we want to look at graphs like the graph of tangent. We could go through and think of tangent of x and make a table of values, right? We know the values of tangent at places like 0 degrees, at pi over 4, at pi over 3, at pi over 6, at pi, pi over 2, all of these values. We could go ahead and, and make use of that. I want to make use instead of a relationship that we know of from, from other places, and that is that the tangent ratio is simply the sine divided by the cosine. And we can make use of this now to help us figure out what the values of, of tangent are and come up with the graph um, much more quickly. What I can do is I can take the graphs of sine and cosine that I've constructed here and actually point by point figure out what's going on with tangent. So for example, if we look at the origin here, if we take a look at the origin, one of the things that you can see is that the cosine value is a maximum at 1 and the sine value is 0, right? Sine passes through the origin. So if we were to compute the tangent value here, we would have sine divided by cosine, which would be 0 divided by 1. And therefore, the value that tangent has at 0 is 0. And we knew this already, simply because of, of our memorized facts here. So that means that any time that sine is 0, tangent will be 0. And in particular, sine happens to be 0 again at pi, sine happens to be 0 at 2 pi. So these are the zeros of our tangent function. On the other side of the coin, when cosine is 0, we're going to end up with an undefined function. When cosine is 0, to compute the value of tangent, we end up having to divide by 0. Having a 0 in the denominator is usually an indication that we have some sort of an asymptote. So any place where cosine is 0, such as at pi over 2 here, we're going to expect there to be some sort of an asymptote. Again, also at 3 pi over 2, we're going to have an asymptote, simply because the value of tangent there is undefined. Our function can't cross that line because, because it doesn't have a value there. Well, this is good. We have several points already and some structure to our function. One of the things to notice here is that, is that tangent is not necessarily bounded in the same way that cosine and sine are. Cosine and sine have a maximum amplitude that they reach depending on the actual function. Tangent, however, seems like it can get as large as possible. Let's, let's see what, uh, what I mean by that. Let's look at a value, say, of just before pi over 2. If we look at a value just before pi over 2, we're talking about a region like like right here, just before pi over 2. Let's think about what's happening. The cosine value is very, very small. So we're taking, if you think about our, if you think about our ratio here, we're dividing by a very small number. And sine close to pi over 2 is, is a positive number. And in fact, it's as large as it gets. So we have a fairly large number on top. And we have a fairly small number on the bottom. 
what this is going to mean is that our function is going to be, so we're going to have our function doing something like this. If we look at a value of pi over 4 here, we know the tangent of pi over 4, the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. We can see that here because at this particular point right here, sine and cosine have exactly the same value. And if we take the ratio of two things that have exactly the same value, we're going to end up at 1. So again, our, our function is going to look something like, like this. Our function is going to look something like this in this region because of the, the behavior we know of at pi over 4 and, and what we can think of when we get towards the asymptote. Likewise, if we look just past pi over 2, cosine is a very small number again, but now cosine is a very small negative number, and sine is a large positive number, or at least a, a relatively large positive number in this case, which means that we're going to be coming down from below here. So what this means then is that our tangent values will start out here at just past the asymptote at very large negative values. We'll come up here and we end up seeing the same sort of behavior. Tangent we know is, is periodic and so we see graphs that look something like this. So in blue here we have our, our graph of, of tangent that's been generated by observing some behaviors of sine and cosine. And we can go ahead and, and check a few things here. Notice that at 3 pi over 2, so at 3 pi over 2 here, sine and cosine again have the same value. Sine and cosine again have the same value. This time they're both negative, but when we divide two negatives, we end up with a positive. And so again, we expect to have a value of about positive 1 there, and that seems consistent. When they're both negative here, when one of them gets close to 0 and the other one gets close to a maximum, we're going to end up with a large positive value, and that's why our trig function, that's why tangent goes off to, to positive infinity like this. Well, before we move on and talk about the other trig functions I want to see today, let's take a, a moment to look at some of the behavior of, of tangent. And to do that, I want us to go ahead and, and construct a, a new graph that doesn't have the distracting sine and, and cosine on there. Once we've mastered these basic graphs, it's important to note that, that we still have to think about the behavior of, of this function when we do transformations. So that will be something that we probably save for a, another, um, another day. But just a, a, a bare graph of, of tangent here. And tangent is probably a graph worth memorizing. You don't want to have to go through and do what we've just done every, every time you want a tangent graph. But this is, this is roughly the graph of the tangent of x. A couple of interesting things here. One, notice that it does not have a maximum amplitude. This graph goes off to positive and negative infinity, which is different from sine and cosine. Um, this has asymptotes. And so if we, if we sort of list out the, the properties of this graph as we did for sine and cosine when we first introduced those, we can talk a little bit about some of these, of these important ideas. Tangent has zeros at every integer number of pi. At 0, at 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. This is the same as sine, which we would expect because tangent is just the ratio of sine over cosine. We have asymptotes. We have these vertical asymptotes whenever we have 2n plus 1 pi over 2. Remember that 2n plus 1 here is just a way of saying odd. We have to have an odd number of pi divided by 2. And one of the other interesting things about tangent, one of the things that will make it very different from other functions that we have worked with so far, is the period. Take a moment and look at what the period of this, of this function is. What is the period of this function? How often does it take to repeat itself? Well, we can see that the graph goes up here does the same thing here and it will do the same thing here. And these points are a distance pi apart. So our function now, the tangent function, has a different period than either sine or cosine. The period of the tangent function is pi. So that's going to change some of our results as we go through and, and try to um, make transformations to the graphs. We'll have to think carefully about those transformations as they relate to, to some of the differences that we see in 
working with tangent. Okay, well let's go ahead and, and look at some of the other graphs. And all of the graphs that we're looking at today are not nearly as common as, as graphs of sine and cosine. So it's important to know these, understand where they come from and, and what they look like, but we won't be working with them in the same detail as the sine and cosine graphs.